even reached out to a beggar, grabbed hold of his shoulder. He was crippled, yet he stood up, and his life was changed forever. In the book that we are reading right now on Wednesday mornings, it is speaking to us about God's purposes for our lives, God's hopes, God's dreams, God's intention. And it's called a daily devotional or a daily inspiration for the purpose-driven life. And like every author who writes about such things, we debate what he is saying. We also embrace some of what he is saying. And one of the specific topics last Wednesday was, we are created to give God joy. Kind of an overwhelming thought. How could I, how could you be capable of giving God joy yet in thinking about us? God creates us. In thinking about us, God calls us into being. In thinking about us, God empowers us and places within us a purpose, a reason. There are so many events in our lives that take us away from that purpose, that reason, so many things that unfold that distract us so many things that break our hearts and we lose sight of the purpose. Our hearts are very valuable to God. They often contain just about every emotion that we will ever feel. And our hearts hold on to emotions. There are seasons in our lives when we are not only unhappy, but we can be bitter. We can be so deeply hurt that it is impossible to get out from under the heartache of the bitterness or of the loss. Yet, in the reading today, at the close of this gospel, Luke writes, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Bitterness, heartache, heartbreak. God is often forgiven us years before we forgive ourselves. I think of the, some of the dumb, stupid things that I have done along life's journey when I was in a bad place, when I was angry, when I was feeling deserted by God, some of the decisions that are made, and you regret doing some of those things for years, and it lingers in your heart. The reading today talks about the presence of the Spirit and how that presence is to empower us to be God's gift to the world, a gift not only of goodness, but of forgiveness. So on this third Sunday of Easter, I invite you to embrace 
the words of this song that was sung for us. We ask that life be kind and watch us from above. We hope each soul will find another soul to love. Let this be our prayer, just like every child who needs to find a place. Guide us with your grace. Give us faith so we'll be safe. May Christ's spirit be real in your life. Amen. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, We ask your blessing this day upon those we name in our hearts. For we know that by naming the concerns, the persons that need your healing, we can be a channel of your love. We also give you thanks this day for the new life of this spring season, for all of the ways that you demonstrate to us powerfully the resurrection and your remarkable creative plan. We give you thanks this day for Braden Scott, for his baptism, and the joy and the promise that he will bring not only to his family, but to all who will come to know him in his life. Grant your blessing upon this faith family, upon this circle of friends, upon the work that we do, and grant that your blessing may bring into the midst of our lives that very real spirit that nurtures us every day. And now we say the prayer you've taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. As we prepare to receive our gifts of money and tithes this morning, let us also remember the gifts of time and talent that create in this faith family the product of Christ's love. And as these guys gathered on that porch yesterday and we ended our time together at Silver Lake, one of the guys observed there are four generations here. We, our oldest fellow present was Pete Hazelwood. He's our wise sage who tells us the stories and keeps us in line. And then there was the generation that could easily be his sons. And then there was the generation that could be a grandson. And our youngest fellow there was a 12-year-old who came and was with us, four generations of guys. And it was a gift to be together and to celebrate Christ's love by the work of our hands, the gift of our time, our talents. Let us worship with our offering.